Hey guys, welcome back. A few days ago, I was laying in my bed and I have a lamp right beside me and was turned on. And this LED light bulb was installed. But suddenly the light turned off. Well, first I thought maybe I pulled the plug or something, but no, I have, or I had a few other of these light bulbs. This is the exact same, except this is now empty because I installed the new one and it's working perfectly fine, but this one does not work. And I would like to take a look inside and see why it stopped working. It was not like it didn't turn on, it just, it was turned on and the light stopped. So what this is, is from the company LightMe. It's an LED light bulb, 9.5 watt, 810 lumen, and it's in the 2700 Kelvin uh, light spectrum. So it's a warm white. And this is a very cozy light. Gives a very good um, light for evenings, not really for working. This is not working light. This is more like if you're tired and you don't want to uh, stay up for long. Because light does influence us humans. Uh, we adapted over thousands of years to the con lighting conditions on Earth. Uh, this means essentially in the morning when we wake up, the lighting outside is in the bluish spectrum. So our body is adapted to uh, send out hormones, or not hormones, um, some chemicals in the morning that react to blue light for us to wake up. And in the evening when outside, the color spectrum shifts into the red spectrum, and our body tries to calm down and uh, get tired, and we do get tired, uh, this is uh, the same effect. So if you try to stay up late, you should use uh, cold colors. If you try to uh, get tired and go into bed, you should use a reddish color light. But that's beside the video. This is just uh, maybe useful information. So the light over here again, 810 lumen, 9.5 watt, 220 to 240 volt, AC, 50-60 hertz frequency, I don't know what RA means, don't know the other things, 2700 Kelvin, 2700 Kelvin light temperature. And that's interesting. So this thing is rated for over 40,000 times on-off switching, and a total a uh, run time of 15,000 hours and I used this light bulb only for two years. So there's no way that I exceeded any of these two ratings. So I'm really interested to see what actually went wrong within the LED and for that I have to open it but I don't know how to at least not yet. So I will come back as soon as I was able to remove the top part. See you in a bit. Okay, so I was able to fit in a very small screwdriver between the outer housing and this plastic part on top, but I had to remove it all the way around, except for this part over here. And then I had to also remove glue. There was glue inside, so I couldn't just pop it open. But now I can remove this part and this is uh, undamaged, so maybe I can use this for something else. However, now we are inside and what we can see here are multiple small LEDs. These are 13 LEDs and one has a black spot on top. Oh, that's interesting. I think this is the culprit. This one seems to be damaged. Let me zoom in a bit. Yes. So as you can see, there is a black spot on top of this LED. Yeah, I think. Okay, so as you can see, black spot. And if I go on top with my screwdriver, like over here, this feels just like the uh, usual what is this stuff? The usual potting stuff, but that feels crispy going over it. So yeah, that's definitely 
burned. Now let me use my microscope so we can take a better look at this. It's this black spot. So as you can see, it's definitely damaged. The rest of the LEDs, that, that's what it looks like if it's undamaged. The other ones, they all look okay. So I think it's safe to say that this is the culprit. And here we can see that there are contacts going through the PCB and then being soldered onto this uh, metal part. Now I know what is damaged, but I would still like to take a look inside. The question is, do we have to desolder this? And then remove the uh, PCB or can I just lift it up because what should be underneath here is a small power sorry guys is a small power supply uh, with LED with an integrated LED driver or rather an LED driver and this is a lot of glue so I have to remove that first Okay, so I tried to cut the glue open all the way around, but it still would not move. So I think it's safe to say that I have to remove the solder over here. And I will do that with my soldering iron, one of these uh, pumps over here. Okay, so hopefully I can now remove the PCB. It's just pressure fit. Yeah. That was unnecessary. I didn't have to re uh, desolder it. <laughs> Just as I thought, the uh, actual power supply is glued onto the PCB for the LEDs. Here's a glue point and an aluminium backplate. The two contacts go through the PCB into these weird holders. And there it is. This is the small power supply. I will take a look at the power supply schematic and come back as soon as I know how it works. Now this took me longer than I thought it would, but that is because there is no dedicated oscillator. It's uh, a slightly variation of a power supply that I'm not too familiar with. So what do we have here? Now we have our AC input. One side is directly going into our bridge rectifier and one side goes through a fusible diode over here through the uh, choke L0, our first spool with a resistor R0 in parallel of 4.7 ohm. This is also something that threw me off and I had to double check if this is right. Uh, and it is, I know, I, I don't know why there is such a resistor in parallel to the choke, but it needs it for some reason. However, now this also then goes into the bridge rectifier. We have our positive and negative coming from the bridge rectifier. And we have our capacitor C1 with 2.2 microfarad, which is this big one over here. Oh yeah, by the way, so of our two contacts, the red, uh, the, the black one directly into the bridge rectifier. Red goes through this fusible resistor, through the choke over here into the bridge rectifier. And this is the resistor I was talking about, which is in parallel for some unknown reason. Into the bridge rectifier over here. The big capacitor is 400 volt rated, 2.2 microfarad. Our negative then goes on over here. One uh, negative goes through these two resistors, R1 and R2, that are parallel to each other with 6.8 ohm and 10 ohm into the source of this component over here. This is the JW1792 
And this is a 500 volt MOSFET non-isolated LED driver and it's here in bug configuration. The second negative then goes through uh, capacitor C2 which is a SMD capacitor and is, where is it, this one over here. Now this is unmarked so I don't know the value. And this goes into the gate of the MOSFET. Drain then goes out through the uh, spool, the joke over here, to LED negative. We have this diode between a drain and a positive from the bridge rectifier and our positive LED over here. We have a yeah, choke, the choke, right, this big thing over here. This is the choke L1. And we have capacitor C3 between LED plus and minus, which is this smaller capacitor over here, which is still a 400 volt rated capacitor. For some reason, they chose to use a 400 volt one, but I don't know why, because this is buck configuration. This MOSFET is constantly oscillating through this SMD resistor over here. Then we have uh, a magnetic field building up and collapsing in the choke over here, which then makes a lower output voltage through the buck configuration over here so I don't know why they used a 400 volt capacitor but they did. So this is the circuit and as I said basic function the MOSFET is oscillating through this SMD capacitor and I think these resistors has, have also something to do with it but I'm not too sure and the rest over here this is simple buck configuration. Oh god, I just wasted so much time on this LED PCB. Now I wanted to light up this thing over here and see if the other LEDs work and I ran into a few problems. The gist of it is yes, each LED still works. They are all connected in series and if I use my probes the right way around I can show you that the LEDs do indeed light up each and every LED. Now I tried to power this one directly from my power supply but I figured out that each LED to turn on needed at least 8 volts and as there are 12 currently in series and normally 13 this right now needs 96 volt and 104 volt if the 13th LD was installed. So I can't power all of them at once with my power supply. But I confirmed every LED does work and yes it was just the one LED that got damaged that completely destroy, dis, uh, destroyed the LED light bulb and these grind these points over here I grinded them in so I could test all the uh, single LEDs. Alright now this is working and I'm, I'm really astonished that they use LEDs that each need at least 8 volt to work and not something a bit with less voltage. Okay and for the last part I want to power on the power supply to actually see the output voltage and to make sure that it works and is not the cause for the one LED to blow up. Because the one LED could be the weak spot and protect the other LEDs, but to make sure that this is the case, I want to power on the power supply. Now I already did this once, but the voltage jumped all the way up to 319 volt DC. And that is to be expected because there was no load applied and this is not uh, a power supply with a proper IC, it has no feedback, it's solely relying on the load applied in combination with the frequency uh, switching the MOSFET. So without a load it's not going to work. Hopefully these uh, crocodile clips solve this. I connected them to uh, the LED turn them around so they don't uh, cause an issue with uh, lighting. But I have to say I'm not sure if these crocodile clips uh, make good connection. These are very cheap ones. So let's see and find out what the voltage is. And yeah, 
small warning, this is very dangerous. Uh, don't do it if you don't have to, and if you do, it's on your own risk. And uh, for example, in this case, my multimeter is a very good one. It's uh, well protected, rated up to 600 volt DC, and I'm using my proper mains probes. These are more expensive ones that just have a bit additional protection. They are properly rated, for example. That's what I'm essentially trying to say. So don't try this at home. Okay, and now let's see. All right, my safety outlet is engaged and let's go. Yeah. The voltage, that's exactly what I expected. Now, obviously it's 2 uh, volt higher, but it's in the range of 104 volt. It seems like the power supply is working. My assumption of 104 volt was right. And I think it's safe to say that only the one LED that blew up was the problem. And that is the cause for the whole thing to not work anymore. So I hope you liked this video and if you did, please leave a like, comment down below. And other than that, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye!